Everything's packed. Don't forget your camera. Right. How else will everyone know that I'm a total tourist? <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hey. Uh, so we are here uh, with our um, composer, uh, Daniel, and we will talk about uh, the music in the game, cons and cons, and about the game itself. And uh, I am the director of the game, and uh, we also have Mangaila. Hey, uh, I'm Mangaila. I'm the communications uh, manager, and I also the assistant writer on writer on Crowns and Pawns. So Crowns and Pawns is a charming European mystery point-and-click adventure uh, that's released on May 6th this year and is available on Steam, GOG, and Epic. So you can always just go right, right ahead and try it out. Uh, in short, Crowns and Pawns is a point-and-click adventure inspired by classics like Broken Swords, The Life, Siberia, and it follows uh, a girl named Milda who is living in Chicago currently, but she's actually Lithuanian. And so one day she receives this letter from her grandfather that she inherited his house. So she travels to Lithuania, and that's where most of the game actually takes place. And I'll just stop right there so we can dive more into the music part and you can check out the game uh, where I mentioned. Yeah, so let's talk about uh, the atmosphere that we wanted to create in the game. So um, obviously, since uh, Daniel and I met while making Broken Sword 2.5, a fan-made adventure, um, I guess both of us uh, didn't have a lot of experience back then, but uh, we gained quite a lot over uh, time and uh, kind of decided to work on this project together as well. So I would say that Broken Sword is probably one of the main inspirations for the game and for the soundtrack. Is that right, Daniel? Definitely. It also left a mark on me, showing me for the first time how adventures are actually a good um, like a good vehicle for soundtrack, a good way to tell stories, to have introspection of characters, growth of characters over time, with themes and music developing over time. So, yeah, and also their approach uh, in Broken Sword is also something we uh, took a bit to heart because they, in, in Broken Sword, they usually focus on having smaller melodies, uh, linked to actions and linked to events rather than long repetitive music that gets boring after a while. So there's a lot of little melodic themes here and there and all over the place, which is um, a nice, um, nice use of music, which we also had a look at. Nice, nice. Would you say that there were any other big influences for the music that you wrote for Crowns and Pawns? Big influences? Yeah, I think uh, one big uh, thing here was that we actually looked at music from the places where the, the game is happening. Uh, for The most interesting to me, of course, as a stupid German, was the Lithuanian influences, which were kind of new to me. And I learned to laugh over time. Um, so basically we tried to have some regional music bleed into the game to give the... Um, the emotional voyage of going back to your roots and finding your roots and finding where you belong, um, some more uh, meat, basically, and to anchor uh, the story a bit in the places where you travel past. So we have some Chicago influence, we have some um, Lithuanian influence. I don't know if I'm allowed to spoil the other places where the story is going, but there are a couple of uh, regional influences which I think gives um, uniqueness to the soundtrack. So you can't really just take this soundtrack and put it into any other adventure game because it has some specific stuff that is uh, its own. And let's talk about the instruments that you used. One of them is obviously the Lithuanian uh, so-called birbine, which is the this Kind of uh, a bit similar. <laughs> oh, you that's, have it. <laughs> that's it. That's yeah. It. It's, yeah. It's so. the sleeper agent of instruments. I'm I'm completely in love with the thing. Um, I didn't get that far during the work, uh, which is 
my personal involvement of the game in, with the game is already uh, some time ago, but I didn't manage to get that deep into the instrument as I would have loved. But it's a wonderful, rich uh, instrument somewhere between, uh, I don't know, the clarinet or uh, on even like a bit like the saxophone, but much smoother and warmer. So it's it's quite unknown, and I kind of discovered a little gem there, uh, thanks to you guys. <laughs> It's a wonderful thing. That's nice. That's nice. And what other instruments uh, did you use? Uh, I think you used a bit of conkles, which is also a Lithuanian like string instrument. Is that right? Yes, um, slightly so, because also a wonderful thing which happened during work on this game is that I um, did some research and I found the most interesting connections between places. For example, the way, for example, my uh, country is connected musically to yours over like several hundred years ago where there's like uh, we, where we actually were kind of cultural neighbors and there's like overlaps between music stuff or like um, how instruments um, like the kankles for example how they are similar to other uh, local instruments in different countries and and so and how this this developed over time so it's it's also historically interesting to me um so i uh, for this because sadly um Kankles as such i couldn't find as a uh, as a digital instrument and i didn't buy them myself sorry um we used basically similar sounding um psaltery instruments that have very similar characteristics so uh but still it was a pleasure to find out those connections like uh Russia and Finland and so on, they, they share similar kind of string instruments and it goes all the way back historically, so it's very interesting. And uh, what about uh, all other instruments? Do you mostly use uh, digital instruments or which ones do you record uh, live? in your studio so the rule in general is as much life as possible with a smaller game like ours it was of course a bit of a challenge you can't just go ahead and hire a big orchestra and, and so on and like five to ten um, instrument uh, uh, instrumentalists for certain things of course with a smaller game uh, you have to make things work also with digital instruments so uh, I used as much as I could. Um, I personally uh, am of a kind that uh, my personal background coming from rock bands earlier, where I noticed that I was, wasn't was able to properly play anything, but play all the things a little bit, kind of helped me in, in my business. So I try to like learn a new instrument every year and learn to play the bits uh, um, and some a bit better than others, so I was able to, to use some in this game. For example, um, guitars were of course a good thing to have uh, in the earlier parts of the game where we are still in Chicago. We have a lot of influence from the Chicago uh, music scene, so we have a bit of a bit of jazz, a bit of blues there. And, and the further we go back to the roots, we have more folk in, uh, influence with the special instrument we showed and also the other local instruments we try to use as much as we could combined with orchestral stuff and um, piano of course which is a very emotional instrument we love to use and these combined to form quite a nice um, emotional musical journey so to speak And uh, actually, getting back to the instrument that you showed, the birbine, it's uh, it's funny that <laughs> yes, that's the one. <laughs> so uh, it's interesting that it's not that easy to get an instrument like that uh, here in Lithuania because there is only a couple of people that are making them manually. There are no like factories or anything that are making these. So we had to search for a bit and people that actually use those they don't want to let them go easily <laughs> it's, so, it's a really interesting because there are some professional bands which play them on big stages 
but it's also quite unknown. So it's really, it, uh, I'm not an expert, but as far as I understood, it's a, like an historical rediscovering of something that used to be, and so it got basically rediscovered and recreated. Uh, so it's a very, it's a very, um, yeah, special thing. Do you have like your favorite pieces? Like which parts you liked working on the most? Maybe you you can like spoil a little bit, you know. Um. Yeah, boof. That, that's that's actually a. I mean, I like the epilogue because it basically brings everything together, and it's basically it's a piano suite covering all the themes, and basically it's. Um, I recorded it quite, uh, like quite quickly. So basically, it's just me at the piano and wrapping up the entire game in a in a nice piano suite. And I, it was really emotional for me because it felt like the arrival, like the very stripped down personal arrival at the end of the journey. So it, I really like it. I also like um, when you arrive in Lithuania the first Lithuanian pieces where we used the folklore music and that's actually always nice to hear and I think it worked quite well. If I say actually, speaking well. of which, uh, I, I, I can emphasize a little that we actually did use some uh, folk melodies, not only Lithuanian instruments, but also some melodies from old uh, Lithuanian songs. Uh, they're not that obvious in the in the tracks in the game, but if you know them, uh, or if even if you don't know them, they add some spice, they add some uh, cultural uh, feeling uh, to the to the tracks in the game. So I, I I believe that that was actually also a good good idea that we did. We had to go to the library to actually uh, look at some uh, physical books, <laughs> make photos of those. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, sources on the internet, actually, sadly, especially like the original melodies, because some of the melodies have evolved, changed, or have been modernized for choirs and, and, and things like that. And we wanted to actually use the original melodies. So um, Mengaila went to the library <laughs> and she made some photographs and then we sent them to Daniel. Yeah, but I think I think that uh, these uh, tracks actually uh, work pretty well. As I mentioned, they're not that obvious, but they do have that specific flavor. And when you add the instruments, um, it does feel local. <laughs> it does feel like home for us, and I guess exotic for others. So at this point, I also want to say thank you that you actually gave me the chance, me, a stupid uh, German, to basically w work on those Lithuanian things. It's, it's a nice thing. Um, it's really nice because uh, I had to basically learn them myself to properly represent them. And in that, in that process, kind of learned more about your country. So I know much more about your country and culture and musical background than I knew before. So it's actually, I have to say thank you for that. <laughs> well, actually speaking to the players uh, that might be uh, looking at this or listening to this recording, um, you will learn a little bit about Lithuania in the game. You will see some places, you, you will uh, also visit other countries, as uh, we mentioned here, you will start in Chicago and then travel to the state and then some other countries um, over Europe, around Europe. And uh, it's kind of, well, it's obviously not an educational game, but I think uh, you can learn quite a lot uh, about different countries and places. Um, same goes to Broken Sword and other uh, games that are actually based on real places. Because you kind of want to see those places in person after playing the game, and you want to go there, travel a bit, and actually discover uh, the uh, the locations that are in the game. And sometimes you want to uh, compare the places because obviously they are 
romanticized a little bit. They are um, they are changed a little bit. Some places are just fantasies in the game. So it's interesting to compare those, and uh, we hope yeah, that. I, I did so myself a bit because. I also worked on the sound design, so um, and for example, looking at a certain cathedral, um, I was basically interested in looking up the real place, and it was kind of surprising how how close you actually represented it. It and I was basically looking at the original sounds, at the original sounds surrounding the place, and so on to have also. I mean, as I get, it's not an of course not a simulation, but still. It gives, I think, it gives the uh, the thing um, some truth. Uh, if you have a look at the real place and try to um, pay it justice, basically. So I guess uh, we can uh, finish this chat. It was really nice to see you, Daniel. It was uh, nice to hear your thoughts about the process and. Uh, uh, we hope that a lot of uh, players or potential players will listen to this and actually listen to the music, buy the soundtrack and enjoy uh, what we have done. Absolutely. Thank you, Daniel. Thanks for having me. <laughs>